Well, hello and welcome to the show. Glad you've joined us again. We're loving filming down here in Arizona at Horseshoe Park. We're having a great time. We're talking about bits. This week, we're gonna talk about two different bits and how to use them. That's coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Gonna take a ride on one true So the first bit we're going to talk about is a stage two solid mouthpiece bit in the Pro Bit series, right? What we've got here is absolutely solid mouthpiece. It's got a little bit of a hinge on the cheek piece, but no give in the mouth. So we're going to put this on him, talk a little bit about adjustment and a little bit about how to get him ready to use it. I like to take my horses through to where they'll ride comfortably in any bit because frankly, I don't know who's going to ride him next, and I don't know what bit they're going to put in that horse's mouth. So I want to make sure that he's ready for all the above. I like to have it just to the lip. This is just right in there where I want it, or it's just kind of pushing the lip a little bit. The chin strap is just a little bit too snug, so we're going to loosen that up a little bit. Get that to where we're happy with it. Then we're good to go. Once that bit's on him and I'm happy with it. Again, you're looking at a two to one leverage conversion. You measured your purchase, divided it into your shank. It's a level two bit, it's a two to one. So for every pound of pressure I apply, he feels two pounds in his mouth. So we talked about this a little bit last week, but let's take it a little further. So that means I've got to reduce my pressure by at least half. Well, how much pressure am I applying? Well, a package of butter is one pound. Two sticks of butter is half a pound. One stick of butter is a quarter of a pound. I know you went through the fourth grade, you can do the math too, right? So a half a stick of butter is an eighth of a pound. How much butter are you using? When you pick up on those reins, how much butter are you using? I love to have a little bit of a hinge on the outside of this bit because even though it's solid in his mouth, I can pick up on it a little bit and make sure that the same old response that I always got from him is still there. Now this is not a bit that you can come and teach him to get soft laterally in. No, that's not going to happen. You can ride him in it and feel that lateral softness, but he's not going to learn to bend in a solid mouthpiece. He already has to know that. So I ride him around here, make sure it's there. Pick up on those reins and make sure that he's feeling that flexion right there. Now you're gonna see a lot more response if you put too much pressure on this bit than you even did last week, right? Last session, I told you be really careful that you don't add too much pressure. You're now going to where you should be riding one-handed. We split the reins with our finger, put them on one side of our horse's body, and we let our hand point where we're going, right? And we guide him with our outside rein and our outside leg. And that should be what's taking us where we need to go. We need to pick up his nose, Pick it up right there, right? Make sure your reins are balanced and even. Now, right there, I want to change direction and he's a little slow. That's why that bit's hinged. I reach in here and just pick up his nose a little bit. This is even more critical than what we did last week. He's not had a solid mouthpiece. So all of a sudden he's like, wait a minute. We went from a really broken, nice mouthpiece to a solid bar. What does all of this mean? So I'm gonna go back to the basic lateral exercises. Put my leg into his position one here in his ribs and just move him over and bring him back. Same thing, switch him right here, position one, move him over, switch legs, bring him back. Let him feel this. Let him understand the stop is the same thing. 
Everything I'm doing is exactly what I did last week. But when I get done riding him in this bit, I can ride him in anything I want within reason. He's not prepared for a spade or a bridle bit, but he's prepared for any bit that I might want him to ride in. So I want to take it up to speed, right? Shorten the rein enough to take the really sloppy bounce out of the rein because the bit's too sensitive. Right here, lift my hand and fix his face. He's kind of poking his nose. That bit's gonna stiffen things up because it's solid. So you gotta kind of bring him back, soften his nose, put him back where you want him. And again, I didn't like his stop. I felt like he was too on his front end. So I moved his front end right away. Don't pull on the reins in that stop. That's gonna make it worse. Ooh. Much better, right? Much happier with that. If you haul on those reins, he's gonna feel that and it's gonna get things worse. We're gonna get more out of proportion so this is a matter, when you put this bit in, you've gone to a point where you say, my horse feels my cues and he responds accordingly. This is not a teaching bit, right? Whoa. My hand shouldn't be moving at this point. Oh, check him. My hand is right here in the center line. Right? All of a sudden, there's no moving in your hands anymore. There's no steering. It all becomes one fluid piece. Your horse is riding. All, everything you've taught him has come full circle. And he's at a point where you can put him anywhere you want him, right? So we have the little bobble in the stop. You don't fix it with the bridle. If you have to fix it with the bridle, what do you do? You go back. You go back and you get another bridle, one that's got some fixability in it. I don't want to fix it with this bridle. If I do, I feel like I'm too much in his face. Now that doesn't mean that I can't pick up on him. Of course I can. I can pick up on him and back him up. I can use the bit. I'm not afraid of the bit because remember, it's only a two to one. It's not like I put 12 pounds of pressure in his mouth. No, no, no. It only is a two to one. Same thing as the last bit I used. The difference is it's stiff and I don't have a lot of flexibility. So as long as I keep him straight, I can pick up on him. In fact, if I want to stop him off the bit, I can ride him up here and pick up on him, right? But I can't do a lot of fixing and bending because there's no bend in the mouthpiece. So again, understanding bits is really largely about understanding what's actually happening in your horse's mouth and following through with that. Right there, he's kind of the outside, so I just, just tap that inside rein just a little bit and bring him around. Now right there, when he takes that wrong lead, I can pick him up straight and lope off again. But I can't do a lot of bending. Lope him around here. Let him follow your hand. Let your hand take him where you want him to go, all right? It's the same thing if I'm out chasing cows. My hand takes that horse. He needs to get over under my hand right there. There we go. So if I push my hand over here, he needs to get under it, right like that. My hand comes over here, he needs to get under it. Boom. If I pick up on him, he needs to soften and come back to that bit. Again, you've given him another final exam. You've said everything we did with the last bit, is it working good? Because if it's working good, then we're ready to go to this bit. Now, I told you in the lifter bit, I probably do 70% of my riding in the lifter. I probably do 5% of my riding in this bit. This is the bit that I use when I'm ready to show my horse off and not have to do much with him. 
but I, if I take him home today, put him back in either a broken number two or all the way back to the lifter and tune on him a little bit and bring him up to where I want him to be. Keep that horse fresh all the time. That's what bits are all about, is giving you the opportunity to change, put something different in your horse's mouth and work on him and then bring him back around to where you want him to be. When I take my horse out of a snaffle bit and put him into a shanked bit, even the lifter bit, or like this is my uh, number two pro series from Weaver, when I go into them, I want a leather rein. And what I like is either about like a half inch or maybe even a 5 8 leather rein that's just really well oiled and has a nice feel to it. I want it to lay from my hand to the horse's mouth in a nice loop. So it's important to have a rein that's not stiff because I don't want to spend my whole life breaking them in. These, these reins were brand new yesterday morning and they came out of the bag broke in. That's the way I like them. I want a good heavy heel weight to that rein. It keeps the rein down out of my way when I'm using my hand. It also allows me to use it if I need to, to tap that horse and do something with it. I want them to feel comfortable and nice for both me and my horse. Up to now, our conversation has been about training. It's been about teaching our horses how to respond to the bit and bringing them along in their education. I don't really use a bit to solve a problem. If my horse has a problem, I go back in his training. I go back to the snaffle. I go back to the lifter bit and I fix that problem. But there's one department we haven't really talked about and that's kids or riders lacking in confidence. Particularly I'm talking about little children. I like to use a lot of bit. In fact, what I use is something like this. This is a Weaver Pro Series number three moderate with a correction mouthpiece in it. I like the correction mouthpiece because it gets a hold of the horse and gets his attention, but it's very flexible. It moves every direction. So if a little kid needs to pull on one rein more than the other, they can, okay? So as an adult, when I'm gonna put my kids on a horse, I make sure that I ride that horse in any and every bit. So when I put this correction on him, I'm going to do much the same as I've done with the last bits. But I want to talk to you a little bit about this theory. So when my boys were little, a good friend of mine, Rick Campbell, told me, he said, Ken, don't have your kids ride in a snaffle. If you have them ride in a snaffle, you're going to end up teaching them to pull. I didn't really think I understood that and I didn't necessarily believe it. So he explained it to me a little bit. He said, do you remember when you were a little kid and you ended up, your horse took you off over to the haystack and you're over there pulling and jerking and kicking? He said, any good kid's horse has a bit of a mind of his own. That's what made him a good kid's horse, right? So he said, we put our little kids on there and now they're over there kicking and jerking and screaming and learning to fight learning to have bad hands. I put this to the test with my kids. <clears throat> and so when my boys were little, I bought them fantastic horses. Horses that had impeccable dispositions, horses that never did anything wrong. But you know what? They were still kid horses, so they had that little bit of that definite mind. And Kurt was riding old Bud, and I had him in kind of like, uh, Oh, like the last bit we were using, like a two to, uh, two to one, level two moderate, the pro series. It was very similar to that bit. And we were in cow camp and I was working in the round pen and I could hear squalling coming up the canyon. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. And pretty soon here come Kurt, right up out of the bottom of the canyon, about four years old, all by himself. And he's squalling for all he's worth and old Bud is walking up to the round pen, just one step at a time. Old Bud didn't do anything wrong. In fact, Old Bud was one of the most honest horses I've ever been around, but Kurt couldn't control that walk. And so I asked him and he's crying. I said, what's the matter? And he said, I want to work cows. And he couldn't take Old Bud down. I went and got more bit. I put a bigger bit on Old Bud. And that fast, Kurt had control, right? Because you take the three to one leverage conversion and it increased Kurt's strength three times. You, you decrease your strength by lightening your hands, 
But when you're dealing with a child or a little kid, they can't necessarily increase their strength if they need to. So by giving them that level three bit, they have the ability to go from 40 pounds to 120 pounds. Well, we know they don't have 40 pounds of pressure in their hands, but whatever they pressure they have, they suddenly get. Kurt was four years old when that happened. Trent was a baby. I never put them back in a small bit again. They both stayed in large shank, number three type bits with correction mouthpieces all the way through. In fact, years ago, those of you that have been watching our show for a long time, you remember when we filmed in Benson, Arizona years and years ago. Uh, in fact, it was about 11 years ago that we did that. And at that time, I bought Trent a horse uh, that was a fantastic white horse, silver. You've seen him on several shows. Trent rode that horse in a spade bit for years. That's all he rode him in. And Trent and Kurt both have really great hands. And neither one of them ever display temper with their horses because they never learned to jerk and fight and kick. Instead, they learned that if they pick up on a light rein, the horse responds nicely. So if you fast forward about six years, Kurt was 10 years old, and we were up in the mountains and we had a little black Mustang horse that was a pack horse. He was gentle to ride, but he was kind of ponyish and nobody liked to ride him. And he rode terrible. He, we borrowed him from a neighbor and he shoved his nose straight out through the bit and he was just, he wasn't fun to ride. But one day we were short horses in camp. And so I told Kurt, you're gonna have to ride blackjack. And he was like, oh dad, I don't wanna ride blackjack. I said, oh, it'll be all right, son, you'll be fine. And I put him on blackjack and I put a bit on his face, a number three correction bit. And we rode all day and Kurt had a ton of fun and we were riding back into camp and one of my master certified trainers, Alicia Lettenmeyer was with me and she said, hey, look at Kurt's horse. And I looked over and Kurt's horse was coming into camp, absolutely flexed, soft and nice on the reins. Little blackjack had never ridden like that in his life but Kurt had never not ridden like that. And so because he had a lot of bit in his hand, he just was able to put that horse where he wanted him. And at that moment, I realized this theory holds water, right? The bit you use is no better than the hands holding it. So you really don't need a bit, right? Honestly, the bit's not relevant to the conversation we're having, but it's relevant at times to how you use it. And so with that little kid, if they've got that extra piece right there, that extra leverage, they never learn to fight and jerk and pull. So then I come forward to riders lacking in confidence. And I'll use my mom for an example. My mom really likes to work with her horse and she likes to practice natural horsemanship. She's no different than me or you, right? But she's not the most confident rider in the world. And so when she goes out to ride, I tell her in the arena, use a snaffle all you want. In fact, the more you use a snaffle, the better. But when you go out, I want you to actually use a number two bit. If you'll use a number two bit, then your horse will, you'll always be able to have that little extra if you need it. So then the argument comes back, wait a minute, if you need it, you shouldn't be riding that horse in that situation. I wish that I could agree with you on that one, but I can't because here's why. Horses have a mind of their own. They do things they shouldn't do, right? You ask them to do one thing and something happens and they do something different. And when that happens, all of a sudden we discover, whoops, we are riding an animal with a mind of its own. And every now and then it needs a reminder. Chico's fantastic. This horse doesn't do anything wrong. I love him. I would put anybody in the world on him. He's absolutely safe, but that doesn't mean he doesn't make mistakes. You saw him earlier stop a little bit too much on his front end. He makes mistakes, every horse does. So when you're working with that horse, no bit is actually a great way to go, right? You, could, you can do that all you want. You don't have to have 
a particular style of bit to make your horse ride. In fact, you can make your horse ride without a bit. But understanding what you're putting in his mouth is the most critical piece. That's what this whole series has been for the last four weeks. I want people to understand I love a snaffle bit. It's the best teaching tool that you ever could use for your horse, in my opinion. It's the simplest way for the horse to learn. Remember, opinions are like elbows. Most of us have two, right? So, but in my opinion, it's the best teaching tool you can put on. But understand what the rest of the bits do and how to use them allows you to bring your horse along in training and where to go with it. A character trait that I feel is really important, not just in horsemanship, but in life, is self-awareness. Actually taking a step back and looking at who you really are and getting a good picture. They say that everybody is really three people, right? The person that you perceive yourself to be, the person that others perceive yourself to be, and the person you really are. But if you take some time stepping back and really looking at yourself deep, it will allow you to see where other character traits are faltering, right? You'll be able to step back and say, wow, I think I'm weak here. One of the things that you'll find is your horses help you do that because every horse is like a mirror of who you are. So when you see that horse having faults in the same spot, you can say, huh, that's kind of me. Every horse has the same hole, that's me. I need to work on that. I need to make that better. Do you need to live in it? No. Do you need to beat yourself up and have a bad self-esteem over it? No, that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about being willing to step back and say, I think this is something I could do better and work forward from there. I hope you've enjoyed this series as much as I've enjoyed doing it. Like I said, bits are one of those things I love talking about. Uh, well-made bits are something that I just enjoy having around and using and, and I think it makes my horses better and I love the conversation but thank you so much for being with us remember enjoy your horses with your family and until next time may God bless the trails you ride find out more about Ken McNabb horsemanship at KenMcNabb.com that one true partner built to ride one true horse a bond that cannot be denied you would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride on one